Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Sue. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about how to travel with a food allergy. My food allergy is alpha-gal syndrome, which is a tick bite induced allergy to meat. If you want to learn more about alpha-gal syndrome and my alpha-gal story, you can find a link to my blog in the video description. Navigating a food allergy at home is hard enough, but what about traveling? Is it even safe to travel with a food allergy? Does the thought of going on a trip amp up your allergy-related food anxieties? It does for me. Nevertheless, I love to travel. I'm not going to let alpha-gal syndrome stop me. I just have to be careful and thorough in understanding what I'm eating. I'll show you some tools that I use to make decisions about safe foods. I rely a lot on a phone app called FIG. This video is not sponsored by FIG. I just find this app incredibly valuable for safe eating, both at home and away from home. It can be used for any food allergy, but it does have alpha-gal syndrome specific category. I'll show you more about that later on in the video. With the help of the FIG app, a little knowledge of ingredients, awareness of my own sensitivity level, and some detective work, I know I can mitigate the risks enough to feel confident about travel. We're hitting the road and heading for Wisconsin to visit family. Normally, before a trip, I would prepare and pack a cooler with safe road snacks and drinks. Those snacks may include some fresh veggies, and fruits, boiled eggs, crackers, sandwiches, etc. But for this trip, I decided to forego all of that and challenge myself to find safe foods along the way. I fully expected there to be times where I would not be able to find something to eat. But that was not the case. While my options were not always the healthiest of foods, I did find plenty of mammal-free safe foods. Come along with me stop by stop and see my decision-making process for finding safe foods. My goal here is not to show you what's safe to eat, but to help you develop your own process of making decisions about what you will eat in any given situation. Having a plan, having a protocol for finding out if a food is safe or not is the key to staying safe. All right, let's hit the road. We started out, my husband Larry, myself, and our two dogs, bright and early on Wednesday morning. I brought along a travel mug of coffee from my kitchen, but no other food or beverages. Before we left town, we stopped at the corner gas station and grabbed a bottle of life water. Just like everything else, you need to know that even the water you're drinking is safe. Some brands of bottled water are purified by filtration through animal bone char. Dasani Water is a well-known brand that uses animal bone char filtration. Dasani is a great tasting water, but it's a no for the alpha-gal syndrome, what can I eat list. For bottled water, I stick with life water or smart water. Our first stop was in Iowa for fuel. When we travel with our dogs, we often take turns going into stores or restrooms so they're not alone in the car. So for this stop, my husband Larry filled the fuel tank and bought the one snack that he knows for sure I can eat, Lay's potato chips. Lay's chips have my favorite kind of ingredients list. Only three simple whole ingredients, no big words that only chemists can understand, just potatoes, vegetable oil, and salt. Around one o'clock we decided to pull over for a potty break for the dogs and for us. While I was walking the dogs, Larry went into Subway and bought a couple of sandwiches. Full disclosure, the Subway Veggie Delight sandwich on multigrain bread with all the veggies, a slice of pepper jack, no dressing, salt, and pepper was my go-to sandwich order even before Alpha Gal came along. Unlike my potato chip snack, Subway bread has a long and complicated ingredient list. Red flags in that list are enriched flour, which I'm not sensitive to, but some people with alpha-gal syndrome are sensitive to the additives in enriched flour. Sugar. Cane sugar may be purified using bone char filtration processes, just like the water. Beet sugar is not filtered, but this list doesn't specify if it's cane sugar or beet sugar. I personally don't seem to react to sugar, but if you are very sensitive, you might need to consider the risk of added sugars. The other red flag is enzymes. 
Enzymes could come from plant or animal materials, which are not specified here. But according to the Subway Nutrition FAQ page, the enzymes in their bread come from plant or microbial sources. So for me and my sensitivity level, the bread is fine. The toppings are all veggies, a slice of cheese, and some salt and pepper. I do okay with small amounts of dairy, so the cheese is fine for me. We do ask the sandwich artist to change their gloves, just to minimize the risk of cross-contamination. Okay, lunch is done, and we're back on the road. We still have some miles ahead of us, so this is a good time for a quick, very important note. Everyone has their own level of sensitivity to alpha-gal. Things that I can safely eat may cause a reaction in someone else and vice versa. I will point out when I'm making a personal judgment call on specific foods or ingredients. Just make sure that you know your own sensitivity and don't eat anything here just because I did without doing your own due diligence. We arrived at our destination around dinner time. Dinner was a wonderful homemade vegetable lasagna. We were so thankful that our hosts worked diligently to keep the menu safe for me during our visit. I'm not going to go into depth here on foods prepared at the house because our main focus is eating on the road where we don't have quite as much control. We did eat out one night at a restaurant brewery called Round Man's in Spooner, Wisconsin. As I'm sure you're aware, eating in restaurants is a whole nother ball game with its own unique concerns, including the potential for cross-contamination in the kitchen, hidden ingredients, and fume reactions. Here's some tips that I use when eating in a restaurant. First of all, I avoid steakhouses and barbecue places. In any other restaurant where meat is served, I try to sit as far away from the kitchen as possible to avoid a fume reaction. I can pretty much tell when I walk in the door if it's gonna be a problem though. In that case, it's just better to go someplace else. When choosing from the menu, first I check for the salads. Most restaurants offer salads, which I order without meat and either no dressing or dressing on the side. If there's an olive oil and balsamic vinegar option, I'll choose that for dressing. If there's salad on the menu though, at least I know I can order something. Next, I'll scan the menu for vegan and vegetarian options. Most of the time at restaurants, I'll go with vegan menu items. Uh, vegan options don't completely eliminate the possibility of cross-contamination, but they do minimize the risk of hidden animal ingredients. Anything deep fried or grilled requires some questions of the server, cook, or better yet, the owner, if you can have a conversation. Be kind, stay positive with the staff, understand that they are busy, but make sure you get your message across. Some good things to ask. If you're looking for something fried, ask what kind of fat is used in the fryer. Some restaurants use lard or beef tallow, which are not alpha-gal safe, but a lot of them use vegetable fats, which are safe as long as no beef, pork, or foods containing mammal ingredients are cooked in the fryer. Do not order anything fried if you're not sure. If you're looking at something grilled, that can also be a bit tricky. If they cook your grilled chicken breast on the same grill used for burgers, you can't eat that chicken. The same with pan seared or oven roasted, the Pans or baking trays must be thoroughly washed after cooking mammal products. If you don't feel confident that the restaurant staff can be trusted to do this property properly, order the salad. Lastly, a word about butter. Restaurants use butter for a lot of things because butter makes everything taste better. If you're sensitive to butter like I am, be sure to ask if butter is used for the menu item you want to order. I usually skip the breadsticks or table bread rolls unless I know they have no butter. I don't make a big deal out of asking, I just don't eat them. I do ask about butter for chicken, fish, seafood, or cooked vegetables though, just to be sure. Okay, let's go back to Round Man's. They had salad options, uh, but looking further, there was a rice bowl that looked interesting and also a roasted trout option. I spoke to the waitress and briefly explained my allergy before asking about specifics of the trout dish. She listened to my concerns and added an allergy note to my order, which she said would trigger a cross-contamination protocol that involved cleaning the grill or pans. She also promised to confirm her answers to my questions with the chef just to be sure she was correct. 
all in all, I felt pretty good about ordering and eating the meal, and there were no late night alpha gal syndrome reaction surprises. Our time in Wisconsin flew by, and Sunday morning it was time to head home. Before leaving town, we made a stop at a Quick Trip convenience store for some caffeine and snacks. Quick Trip has a lot of grocery items to choose from, as well as typical convenience store fare. I selected a banana and a box of Triscuit crackers, along with a big cup of dark roast coffee. I chose the banana over the other available fruit options because sometimes prepackaged prepared fruit and vegetables can be coated with preservatives that may not be alpha-gal safe. So rather than take a chance, a banana got the vote. Let's take a look at Triscuits in the Fig app. Here are the results of the barcode scan. Triscuits, like Lay's potato chips, have a short ingredient list that makes them a good choice. Whole grain wheat, canola oil, sea salt. No big words or questionable additives. Awesome. There's one more thing I want to show you about the Triscuit labeling. See that U inside a circle at the bottom? That is a kosher symbol. I'm not an expert in all things kosher, but I do know that it means that meat was not cooked in or along with this product. So it's a good clue that this product is probably safe. We'll see the symbol on another label later in the video. Around two o'clock, we decided it was time for lunch. Again, because of the dogs, we didn't want to go inside and sit down in a restaurant. I opened my Fig app and looked at the fast food restaurants nearby with Alpha Gal safe menu items. Wendy's makes the safe list with several items, including their chicken nuggets, fries, and baked potatoes. Here we are again in the Fig app. Using the restaurants tab, I selected search filters to include Wendy's. Then I chose all categories, so it would show me the whole menu. I chose chicken nuggets, no sauce, and fries. Chicken nuggets gets a green light. Clicking on the nuggets gets me to the ingredients information. In typical fast food fashion, the ingredients list is long and full of chemical words, but the Fig app makes it easy with a color-coded, green is good, red is bad system for deciding if a food is safe. You can also click on the chemicals for more information about what they are. And here are the fries and the ingredients. Both the nuggets and fries get a green light. So while they're not particularly healthy, they were a hot and filling lunch and I didn't have to worry about it making me itchy later. One last fuel stop on our way through Iowa and Larry grabbed some almond M&Ms. A barcode scan in the Fig app came back yellow, which means it may be okay, but use caution. The flagged ingredients were sugar, which I don't seem to be sensitive to, and the dreaded natural flavors. Without more information as to what those natural flavors are, it could be a risk. But a little more detective work, inspecting the package, and there is the letter U inside a circle near the ingredients list. Remember that back from the, the Triscuits? This symbol means the product is kosher. This is a good clue that the product is safe because kosher means that meat and certain ingredients like milk cannot be cooked together. Since milk is an ingredient in this product, I can feel reasonably sure that the natural flavorings are not meat-based. I determined that the almond M&Ms are safe for me to eat. So I closed my fig app, took off my detective hat, and enjoyed the candy while we covered the last miles of the trip. We're back home. The trip to Wisconsin and back was a success. A lot of fun, no allergic reactions. I learned a lot about eating safely on the road. I hope you did too. There are absolutely safe options to be found. I do recommend preparing and packing a cooler with healthy, safe foods whenever possible. But in a pinch, eating on the road is completely doable. Besides convenience stores and restaurants, don't forget the grocery store. Every town has one and you can find a lot of familiar safe, ready-to-eat foods that you're used to having at home. Just like at home, it takes diligence and careful detective work to stay safe while traveling. Never be careless or complacent about what you put in or on your body. Recipes and ingredients can change, so always check the label, even if it's something you're used to being able to eat. The last thing you want is an allergic reaction away from home, or ever. 
Alpha gal syndrome is a challenge. That's all it is. Don't let it stop you from living and doing the things that you love. Life is full of challenges and obstacles. We just have to learn how to live well in spite of them. That is my mission, not to limit my focus to my allergy. I'm going to focus on all of the things that bring me joy in life. If you follow me, you'll see that the content I create is not just about alpha gal syndrome because alpha gal syndrome is not who I am. It's definitely a factor in my daily life, but I am so much more than that. And so are you. Stick with me. We're in this together and I'm so glad to have you on this journey with me. If you have an alpha gal travel story, tips, tricks, or ideas, please share in the comments or on my Susan by a Thread Facebook page. The link is in the video description. Also in the description box, there is a link to my blog where you can read more about my trip as well as my alpha gal syndrome story and much more. If you found this video helpful, please help me out by clicking on those like and subscribe buttons. Until next time, live, eat, and travel safe.